first topic we did want to cover was about the pandemic, how things have been, and what the future looks like. So. Go ahead, Chancellor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pre Chancellor, President. Uh, so uh, we've managed the pandemic uh, very effectively, and the reason that we were able to have a successful outcome is that we paid particular attention to the public health experts, uh, not only in our region, but in our hospital, in our healthcare system, as well as the CDC. And that is the path that we're going to be following because we know that there are going to be other airborne uh, pathogens and other types of pandemics that may be uh, ahead. And so we're going to follow the same approach. Use the science, use the best public health uh, practices that are available, and make the right decision for the health and safety of our students, faculty, staff, and the community in which we live in. Yeah, President Troy, go ahead. So we're very thankful. We're very thankful to the governor, Governor Mike Parson, and members of the uh, state legislature for their strong support of higher education. And it is a testament, their support through core appropriation, and core appropriation increase, as well as other special projects, that they believe that our university is doing well, that we are meeting our mission when it comes to student success, as illustrated by the highest graduation rate that we've achieved in our history, as well as record numbers for research expenditures. And we are, together as four universities, uh, the primary, the primary economic engine when it comes to higher education supporting economic and workforce development. During the past two years, 36,000, over 36,000, uh, degrees and certificates have been provided so that we can contribute to the state of Missouri and beyond. So we're very pleased. Okay, and the final um, topic we wanted to cover before we open it up for questions was the votes that just happened on Thomas Jefferson and the history uh, walk of the history committee. So mm -hmm. uh, I think Chair Chapman is going to yeah. lead off. With it. All right. Yeah, this was a um, we. We wanted to, number one, acknowledge the work that those task forces had put in. We, there was a lot of great people that worked for those task forces, and we appreciate the time and energy that they put into um, providing those recommendations. For the reasons stated, you know, and it was a, it was a, a pretty, um, the, I, I don't want to call our board divided. I think we're very unified, but at the same time, we just had some differences of opinion on the charges of those committees, whether those charges aligned okay. with the recommendations that they made, and, um, and, and we weren't able to, to necessarily see that, so therefore we just couldn't vote in, vote in favor um, of the specific recommendations. But we, um, we do stand by you know, our decision. Um, and we, we really hope to, to unify, um, unify our, our student body, um, our faculty, the people that, that, that helped out um, uh, making those recommendations. We really just wanted to do the right thing today, and I think that we did, and I stand behind what we did. Well, we didn't all agree, as you as you could see. So we did at, at least have one person dissent. That was the second vote that we took. We had a four-four vote, which um, which did not pass the, the initial resolution. So we did have significant disagreement. Um, um, so so I, I I I do think that there was significant disagreement. It was on display, but I I do think we came down with the right decision. So I I don't think we necessarily all all agreed. In the end, we did reach a majority, um, so that we could you know get something accomplished today. Um, so I know there's some people that will be upset. I know there's some people who who um, you know, may be ecstatic, but I think we it's a very humbling moment to have to make these decisions. These are not times that we consider to be happy, you know, but we um, just feel like we're just doing the work of the university and, and we feel like we did the right thing. Another question? Later? Um, there was a quote you put in the community. Um, the case that is around with the 
Dr. Choi, yes, go yes. ahead. Uh, yes, we do plan to uh, maintain the structure, the structure that protects the, uh, the obelisk, uh, the Thomas Jefferson obelisk. And the reason that it's there is uh, it is a historic uh, uh, artifact that came from Monticello. And when accepting that artifact back in eight, the late 1800s, uh, there was an agreement that we needed to maintain the integrity of that artifact. And so, yes, it will stay. Understood. Understood. So the 4-4 vote was for the resolution that contained the QR code. And because it didn't reach a majority, the vote failed. So that was pushed aside. So then the second vote was for um, the resolution that rejected the QR code and did not adopt also the wayward sign. So we, so, so we went back to the, to the first resolution that we looked at, no QR code, no wayward sign, and that's the one that we voted on, and we voted on that one seven to one. Okay, that makes more sense now because the one you passed said uh, no code and no sign at all. Right? You are correct, yes, sir. Okay, well, my follow-up question would be, what was wrong with the task force recommendation? What, in your mind, what, why didn't it pass? Well, you know, and, and you know, I, I mentioned this, um, beforehand, and I think the board expressed this, you know, during the deliberations, was that, you know, the charges didn't necessarily align with the recommendations that were given. And that is problematic, you know. So, so when you get a recommendation back from a task force and you didn't, you weren't asking for that recommendation or it was outside the scope of what was asked for, that was, um, you know, fatal to some of the, um, to a few of the recommendations. I think that was more, um, more applicable to the to the walk than the Thomas Jefferson contextualization, but still that suffered from the, the same problem. And and I'll tell you, it, it, you know, these are not clear cut issues. That seven to one vote seems clear cut, but we debated for quite a long time and we're quite divided. Lots of great points were made. I think even our, our chancellors at the other universities, you know, chimed in as well. So these were tough decisions, and I don't want that seven to one vote to um, make anyone think that this was not a closely divided decision on which direction to go. And, um, and, and I don't want anyone to think that we don't appreciate the time and effort that was put in by all the members of both of those task forces that put the time and energy in to come up with those, with those recommendations. And President Choi, what's your reaction to how the board well, it is a decision of the board, and I'm really glad that the board had an opportunity to have a public meeting to discuss that matter. Uh, for me, as an academic, I believe in contextualization, but the vote, the 4-4 vote, wasn't a vote against contextualization from my perspective, is how do you contextualize? At our university, at universities around the country, individuals are being contextualized through more research. And with uh, historic uh, research, history research that occurs, our understanding of figures change and evolve. And so for us, the best contextualization is done through research by historians and others that enlighten us, that make us challenge our current understanding. Otherwise, what is the purpose of research? Yes. What do you think the board's going to do with the statute that will be proposed on that? Well, I'll ask. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think the statute will remain as is. You know, I know there are sensitivities around the statute and Thomas Jefferson himself, but I think we've got to find different ways in order to um, express our differences about the Jefferson statue. But I do think that the Jefferson statue um, now will remain. We've decided, we decided long ago that we weren't gonna remove it. We've now made the, the very close you know, decision today. Um, so we do empathize with those that struggle with Thomas Jefferson and his existence and the things that may have occurred you know, a long time ago. Um, but at the same time, um, um, we, we are unwavering in our, in our thought process about his place on our campus. Mm-hmm.
If I can yes, add. please. A as you may recall, uh, last, last summer, when there was a petition for the university to move the Jefferson statue, a decision was made by the university to keep it where it is. And my position is, uh, is, 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 is uh, informed by historians like Annette Gordon-Reed. Uh, that statement that was read by Curator Burnsick was very powerful. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it does say that, that even historic figures like the founding, founding fathers have shortcomings but we should also recognize them for their incredible contributions that they have uh, uh, delivered for the country. No, no, you please go ahead, please go ahead. <laughs> uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, can you go more in depth about what this means? Mm -hmm. If I, if I can, yes. yes. Um, I think there, there, there is a misunderstanding uh, that higher tuition translates into uh, less affordability. And the way, the best way to illustrate that is we can have lower tuition, but with lower tuition, if we don't have the revenues and the resources to hire the faculty members that we need, to upgrade the laboratories that are needed, and the clinical experiences for our students, depending on their discipline, then our students are not gonna have the ability to take the courses that they need in a timely fashion to graduate. So because of lack of courses, because of the lack of faculty and staff to deliver those courses, if a student takes five years or six years to graduate, even with the lower tuition, the overall cost of education increases. So we, we observe uh, the time that it takes to graduate. And we have reduced over the past, we have increased, I'm sorry, we have increased the percentage of students that graduate in four years or less significantly over the past four years. We want to increase that even more so that students are able to graduate and graduate on time, which means that they can do it with less debt and uh, pursue their careers in, in the marketplace or pursue professional and graduate degrees. Mm -hmm. um, with the uh, Thomas Jefferson Monument, as it is, mm -hmm. is expected to continue to trouble African American uh, students on campus. I'll take that, but President Troy can chime in as well. Um, it may. I mean, I can't guarantee or um, or try to predict how other people are gonna feel about Thomas Jefferson moving forward. I don't think our decision is gonna make those that, that weren't happy with Thomas Jefferson be happy about him now. So I don't know how, that, how that's gonna um, affect them. But I do, um, I, I think that I am very empathetic towards students that do struggle with, with, that, with his legacy. Um, I think there are resources on, on campus as an educational institution uh, to learn more about him or to um, find people, you know, to, to, to discuss, you know, tough issues like that with. Um, I'll let President Troy chime in. So the contextualization has been going on at the university and will continue to go on through research. You may recall that late last year there was a, there was a joint event with the Kinder Institute as well as other centers at the university to contextualize Thomas Jefferson with scholars that talked about his achievements and his failings. And so we will continue, and we ask our, our faculty, researchers, and students to continue to learn more about 
complex individuals, and that's and that's really a hallmark of our of our university and universities around the country. Did you have one more? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, well, I only joined since um, I joined in March 2017, and uh, and and the ability or the authority, the authority for the president to modify compensation has been in existence, as far as I understand, since 1969. So perhaps it was, but I was hired with the mandate to ensure that we operate the university with accountability, accountability for uh, achieving the excellence that we expect from this university as well as the three other universities that are part of the UM system. And I believe very strongly that we have outstanding faculty members here and at the other three campuses, and they are doing more, more than what would we would normally expect. And that is one of the reasons why the board has been so supportive of merit increases for our faculty and staff. But I also believe that we are all accountable. And if we are employed by the university, whatever job we have, that we should deliver on our expectations and accountability. And so, uh, the the performance-based uh, salary reductions, I understand, are temporary and can be reversed by higher performance in teaching and or research. But using uh, performance measures to evaluate uh, faculty members is very important. We do that. We do that for tenure and promotion. We do that for annual evaluation. So that. That component is not new. That component is not new. But we're, we're holding, each of us is holding ourselves accountable, but we're also holding everyone else accountable because our supporters, the taxpayers, as well as the students and parents that pay the tuition, expect it, and we must deliver. So thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right.